So ever since the introduction of gestures, customization on really any Android device has become somewhat of a dying art. It used to be that you could just use any third party launcher to customize your phone's home screen and it would work just as flawlessly as the stock launcher that shipped with the phone. But gestural navigation changed the way the entire navigation system worked, not just in usability of course, but in how they were integrated on the back end as well, in that the gestures were actually baked right into the home screen launcher itself. It was no longer a separate part of the OS, and what that meant was that if you started using a third party launcher, well, either gestures would stop working altogether and you'd have to revert back to three button navigation, or at best, the experience of using gestures was clunky, and whilst it has gotten slightly better over time, it's still not really all that enjoyable. So a couple of years ago, this is why I started rooting my phones. With a rooted Android device, I could just use a module called Quick Switch to change what my phone considered to be the default home screen launcher. And this meant that gestures went back to working how they should as long as the third party launcher was supported. Then with the release of Android 11, pretty much every launcher that did support Quick Switch, or at least those that had any form of decent customization, well, they became obsolete and there has been no indication of this changing in the near future either. So with that said, when I started using my Pixel 5 last year, it quickly became apparent that in order to set up my home screen in the way that I wanted, I'd need to look at alternative methods using the Pixel launcher itself. And so after lots of research and tinkering around, here's the end result. Simple, but still quite nice if I do say so myself. Now there are a lot of caveats that come with customizing the Pixel launcher. Lots of restrictive components with very little wiggle room. And if you wanna have a completely fresh slate with which to build upon, which is how I achieved this setup, well, the biggest caveat of all is that unfortunately you do still need to be rooted. And this is because for whatever reason, Google decided that they would place not one, but two immovable widgets on the home screen. This at a glance widget at the top and this Google search bar widget down the bottom. Now it's not like these are bad widgets per se, but if you wanna make your home screen look fresh and unique, well, they just stick out like a sore thumb. If you'd like to go down the process of rooting your Pixel device, then I actually made a video that covered that exact process a little while ago, which I'll link up in the cards and down in the notes below. But I will say, if you just wanna use a custom icon pack, then good news, as long as it's just on the home screen, well then you don't need to be rooted at all and I'll cover how to do that a little later in this video. But with that very long-winded introduction out of the way, let's dive in and get this Pixel 5 set up. Okay, let's first get that wallpaper loaded in. And this one comes from the Backdrops application, which I will have linked down below. It's called Shoreside Slide. So if you search that up, it'll take you straight to this wallpaper. Once that has been set, let's clear everything that we can on the home screen, which is essentially just all of the icons, because as I said, Google doesn't let us remove the search bar or the at a glance widget. So if you just wanna have a custom icon pack on the home screen, then we can do so by downloading an app called Shortcut Maker. It is completely free and a must have if you're looking to customize any home screen that doesn't allow for icon theming. So what we're gonna do here is actually create widgets for each of the app icons we want on our home screen. And because they're widgets, we can then make them look exactly how we want them to. It's kind of like what you have to do on iOS to get custom icons, but a little more seamless. So to create our first app icon, we actually need to long press our home screen and select the widgets option here, then navigate to the shortcut maker widget menu and drag and drop that onto our home screen. It is important to do it this way instead of creating the widget directly within the shortcut maker app itself as otherwise we'll get this little annoying icon on top of our app icon. So from there, we wanna tap on this apps button here, select the first app we want on our home screen, which for me is the Gmail application. And then we get our menu for customizing the icon. So let's start by tapping the Gmail label here. And I'm just going to select the hide label option as app labels on your home screen are a surefire way to start making things look cluttered. Then we'll tap on the edit icon button. And as you can see, all of the icon packs you have installed on your phone will show up here. And you can even select photos from your gallery, which is kind of neat. Now for my particular setup, I'm using the drops icon pack, which is this little Gmail icon here. This is a fantastic, albeit discontinued icon pack, but I'll show you how to create similar widgets in this same style a little later on if the app you're theming isn't supported. Okay, so let's select that little Gmail icon and hit the check mark and that's it for this icon. So I'm now gonna tap create shortcut and there it is. So let's do that one more time, but this time we'll do it with an app that isn't supported by the drops icon pack. 
So we'll long press our home screen, select the widgets menu, scroll down to the shortcut maker section and drag and drop this onto our home screen. We'll select apps again. And for this one, I'm gonna select the YouTube Creator Studio app as I know for sure the drops icon pack does not support it. We'll once again tap on the edit label button and hide the label, and then we'll tap on the edit icon button. So whenever an app isn't supported by the drops icon pack, I have found that using the Delta icon pack, although slightly modified, works really well. It has a very similar pastel colorway to the drops icon pack, so they blend in beautifully. Now I know for a fact that this pastel icon here comes from the Delta icon pack, so I'll tap on that. Then I'll come over to the style page and bring the size all the way down to 44. After lots of testing, I found this to be the right size so that it matches the sizing of the drops icons. Once we've done that, I'll hit the check mark, then tap on create shortcut, and there you have it. It fits beautifully with the Gmail icon we created earlier. And the reason why the Delta icon pack is so great is that it's still updated fairly regularly and has support for over 2,500 custom icons, which is far more than the drops icon pack. All right, from there, we'll go about setting up every icon that I'll be using on the home screen. So for the doc, it's the Gmail app, messages, the Google dialer, Google maps, and Google Chrome. And then on the second page, I have a row above the dock that has the Google Play Store, the YouTube Creator Studio app, Twitter, Spotify, and WhatsApp. Now, if icon theming is all you wanna do, then that's it. I probably wouldn't suggest adding any additional widgets on this main home screen because then things will start to look pretty cluttered. But if you do wanna take things a stage further, then stick around, it's about to get technical. Okay, so firstly, let's remove those immovable widgets. And as I said before, you do need to be rooted for this process to work. So we need to first download the Substratum application via the Google Play Store, which is a theming engine that allows you to customize pretty much any part of your phone's system UI. There is a light version of this app, which is in early access at the moment, and it's free. So that also might work for this process, but I haven't actually tried it myself. Now to actually utilize this app, you need to install separate theming applications. And so the one that we want to install is called the Pixel Launcher Editor. This one is not available via the Google Play Store. You'll need to grab it off the XDA forums. And I do believe that you also need an account to download files off XDA, but it's free to sign up and I'll leave the link down in the description below. Whilst you're there, you'll also wanna download the Pixel Launcher Helper file. It's on the same page. Now I'm assuming if you have a rooted Pixel device, then you've done so using the Magisk application. So let's open that up, navigate over to the modules section and select install from storage. Then select the pixel launcher helper.zip file, let that install and then follow the prompt to reboot your phone. With your phone rebooted, if you haven't already, install the pixel launcher editor theme and then open up the Substratum application. Okay, here's where it gets kind of technical. So we'll launch into the pixel launcher editor, tap on proceed if it's the first time you're using it. And then you can see we have a few different options here. For me, all I'm mainly using it for is to remove the two widgets on the home screen. So if that's all you wanna do as well, then you can follow the steps I'm using exactly. If you wanna dive in and customize other components of the Pixel Launcher using this theme, such as icon sizes and labels and so forth, then you might wanna take a look at the instructions on the XDA article before you proceed. But anyhow, for my setup, we first need to select a grid layout up the top here, and I'm gonna select the five by seven option. Then we'll ignore this top navigation bar section and come down to the pixel launcher section and enable the checkbox. We then wanna open the remove search bar drop down menu and select yes, five by seven. This grid size needs to match the grid size that you selected above. Then we'll select the dock drop down menu and change this to dock 05, which is telling the app that we want five icons in the dock. Then we'll leave the text size drop down menu. And then finally, we'll select the icon and at a glance options drop down menu and scroll down and select remove at a glance. We'll then enable the checkbox up here. And with all of those settings loaded in, now we can tap on the floating bubble down here and tap build and install. Then we'll reboot our phone. Now once rebooted, we'll go back into the Substratum application and select the manager page down here. You should see an option here from the Pixel Launcher Editor with all of the settings that you loaded in. Tap the checkbox, then tap the floating bubble down here and select Enable Selected. The Pixel Launcher text should now go green and if you go back to your home screen, you'll see that everything has been updated except for the at a glance widget. So reboot your phone one final time and if all has gone according to plan, you should now see that the at a glance widget is gone and you're left with a blank space up the top. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the at a glance widget is actually just hidden. It hasn't been removed. So that means you can't place anything over the top of where it was. And you can even still launch into the calendar if you tap on the correct spot. But at least it's no longer proving to be an eyesore on our home screen, right? So then the last step of the puzzle is to recreate that weather widget. So we'll long press our home screen, tap the widgets icon, and we'll scroll down to the KWGT section and select a one by one widget and drag that as high as we can onto our home screen. Then we'll long press to resize. We'll drag that all the way over to span the entire width of our home screen. And then we'll also expand its height by one notch. Once that's done, we'll tap on that to launch into the KWGT menu. So this weather widget comes from the Ornit for KWGT pack. So we'll tap on that. And it's this one here labeled widget 101. So we'll tap that. And then we're gonna tap on this stack group layer here. And then in this group, we're gonna select the top two stack groups as well as the bottom stack group and delete them all together so that we're left with this neat row of weather icons here. From there, we wanna navigate over to the layer page, set the margin to 21 and then the scale to 85. Then we'll go over to the position tab and set the Y offset to negative 160. All right, let's head back to the root section and we'll head over to the layer tab and set the scale here to 106. We'll save that, come back home and bada boom, bada bing, there's our completed widget. And there you have it. That is our completed customized home screen setup using the Pixel Launcher itself. Now, I know I am a minimal guy. Some of you like more icons or more complex widgets on your own home screen setup. So go for your life, but this will at least give you the base with which to build your custom home screen setups around using the Pixel Launcher itself. Now, there are two things that are not ideal at all about this solution. They're all to do with the app drawer in that firstly, we cannot customize any of the app icons. And secondly, we can't hide any app icons either. So your app drawer will still look like a cluttered mess. Oh, and for some reason, that little bounce app drawer animation when opening it and scrolling through it, it also gets disabled whenever you use the Pixel Launch Editor. But hey, at least we're able to now control the look of our home screen using this method without sacrificing on functionality. And there you have it. Now, it's definitely been a bit of a wild ride to get this home screen set up looking the way that we did. So Google, if you're watching this, please, oh, please help us out by at least letting us remove the default widgets without having to root our phones. That would almost be enough. And then a massive bonus would be letting us hide apps in the app drawer. But aside from that, that's actually it. Hopefully you found this video helpful or at least somewhat interesting. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.